What is up you two? We have another exciting tutorial for you today. This time we're going to make a target hologram coming from a watch. Now first thing you're going to do is put your movie file into a composition. Just drag it into that little box right there. And then what you're going to do is you're going to find out where you want to turn on. Make sure layer select it. New command shift D on a Mac or edit and split layer. Now right, the next thing you're going to do is I add, I got some target files for y'all on um line. You can click the link in the description. There should be a little download button. Just click that download button and download as a zip, unzip it, you should have some files, and all of them are the same ones that I have. So what we're gonna do is I have my target layer. And what you're gonna wanna do is you don't wanna scale it down using these little boxes. What you're gonna wanna do is um Scale it down using this. The reason why is because we want to keep it a perfect box. And if it's not, it's going to look like people are like, well, you don't want anything organic, as in you don't want anything perfect because it's easy to spot. Well, that's really for like stuff that's like maybe like blood hits and stuff like that. But for this, it's supposed to be a sharp target. So we want perfect and organic shapes, if you get what I'm saying. So, because if you have a circle and you just tell, okay, rotate, it's going to rotate kind of weird. So, um, yeah, be sure to just use this instead, instead of just going it down with that. And then you're just going to change the position of it like that. And if you want to, you can put that in 3D space. And uh, put tilt to it. Change that. There's a way a lot of things you can do with this. You can, like, tilt it like that, then have in this is, I'm just showing y'all something y'all can do real quick. Um, what was the scale on that 15? Then you can scale this down to 15. Put that in 3D space. Tilt a little bit. Um, as you can tell, this is kind of looking quality. See how it's like, you know, coming out of it. I'm sure a lot of things you can do with these. It's really cool when you have spinners going, you know, for kind of like at an angle. So if you want to do like a angle type shot, just let me know. And we will put that target where it's going out and going back in. And then it just shoots off. So if you want to do that, just let me know. First off, let's go ahead and clean up here. Let's call this layer target. Um, call this layer... Um, Effect because this is the layer we're going to have our effect on and call this layer non effect okay so now what we need to do next is get our spinner I have mine on layer 2 and layer 1 it should be the same thing on y'all's so I'm just going to drop layer 2 in there and I'm going to bring the scale down to 15 just like the other one so therefore it would be perfect you see what I did is I put these elements in Photoshop and I kind of took them apart. See, so I took the target away. I took the outer room away. And I took and I saved each one of these files. I kinda already did that for y'all in case y'all didn't have Photoshop. So you're welcome. <laughs> so yeah. Because if you were to just have that one big picture, we couldn't be able to get these spinny things spinning. Unless you want to spend like three hours of masking. So anyway, we're trying to spin it. Position this, try to get that little target right in the middle of that target. That would be like right where it was in the original one. That's kind of how we want it. Alright, there. Okay. As you can see, it lines up with the line. That's what we want. Now, what we can do is um, we need to select these two layers, Command Shift D, or split them. We need to get rid of them because we want it to start up whenever we turn our watch on like that so now our next step would be to get another um, right there. um layer one is our other spinner we're gonna name this one name the, fir the big one spin left this is gonna be important layer so you just just trust me it's gonna be important and this one's going to be spin right. Okay, and then we're going to change this one. Same thing. 
scale, bring it to 15. And then your position. Uh, bring it down. Just like that, I think it needs to go over like one click. Right there, that's perfect. Now, we need to keyframe rotation. See how it's going to spin right? We know this one's spinning right and now it's spinning left because what we don't want is both of them spinning in the same direction. It just looks bad. Now, the one that's smallest always spins a little faster. So, we're just going to get this flying. Just changing degrees. It's flying super fast in this scene. Awesome. Now for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not going by for the next 10 seconds doing this. I'm just going to um, do it for like 2 seconds. But you do it for however long you want to. So we're going to put it back on that keyframe where we started off. Make sure it's perfectly on there. That's important. Then we're going to go to spin left. And we're going to spin this on the left side. So um, keyframe rotation. This one takes a little bit longer to spin since it's on the outside and it's bigger. So, you know, go that way and then go this way. Continue going this way because that spinner is still going. Kind of want to watch that other spinner. Make sure not going in the same direction. So that's pretty good. It's decent. You know, if you want to get into real detail, you can have them change directions at the um exact time but for the sake of tutorial I'm not gonna get that much into detail. So like we did, you know, get rid of that so it starts up at the time we want. Next thing is this PSD one. PNG one, my bad. Um drop that in there. Um we're gonna call this one base tar target. And bring the scale down to 15. Yeah, you know what? This is kind of a different PNG file. So I'm going to do that. And then bring the position over. Bring it down. Like I said, that put everything in the middle. That's just kind of important. Um, the base. What we're going to want is we want the base in the back. We're going to bring all those layers on top of it. I know it's like why, but the reason why is so these spinners will be on on top of it. We don't want them behind it. It's kind of, it makes, usually the little differences is what the effect look, is what the makes the effect look good. So, you know, like we did, get rid of that. So it starts up at the same time. And our last thing is this HUD screen. I made this a PSD so I can show you all what to do in case this happens. As you can tell, you ha you have black, so we're gonna ch just change that mode to screen, just like that. Um, scale it down a whole lot. Uh, that should be good. Change the position of it. Um, next thing is bring the opacity down. We don't want that big, really. Okay, so that looks pretty nice, but thing is, we have this little cut off there. I already didn't make these shapes. I found them online. So what I do is I just take this mask tool, and I just kind of make, try to make a perfect little rectangle type thing, and I change that mask to um, subtractive. And as you can tell, it's kind of too sharp, in my opinion. So what I do is I just add the tiniest bit of feathering to this, like four. And that's gonna like smoothen that edge out so it's not so sharp. As you can tell it still has that a little bit of a white liner around it and we got rid of that um pointy thing. So next thing that we're going to do is something I like to do a lot. It's called pre composing. What it does is it takes all your layers and it puts them into one. Now um this thing is fully customizable. You can get it um like this little layer right here and get it spinning right there, spinning right there, get something spinning right there. You know, just customize it. It's yours to customize. And the next thing we need to do is make sure the rid of that. So it's up at the same time. Okay. We are going to select all these layers, except for that one. Those bottom two, we're going to leave those. And just search pre compose. 
Very oh. composed. It's under layer precomposed. I forget where it is all the time, so I just search it. It's faster than looking for it. Okay, so um, you don't really need to um tell it's going to cut on and cut off because it's that it already did in the precompose. Now, next thing we're going to need to do is make sure you select effect. This is why we need to split this because we don't want to have to track all of this. We we only need to track this. So track motion. So we're gonna use that guy. We're gonna use and you know make the. I think for the I've tracked this before, and um it rate us them if your target is moving a bunch that that right these two rectangles right here need to be big. But if it's not moving a lot, then they can be small. And what this is going to do is it's going to track your footage so it knows where to put it. Now, you'd be like, oh, I'll just track my hand or I'll track that sign. No, it needs to be on the thing that where the effects is going to be because or it's going to follow your hand in the final result. Now, I have the watch. You want an easy to locate spot. Oh, dang it. Ah, I do that all the time. I accidentally click that. Right there on the edge of that watch, that little white spot. Click the little play button, then watch it go. It is tracking as we speak. Save you so much time. Okay, stop. That's all I'm going to track. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the Mac, that's control click, or you know, PC, just right click. Um, Make a new null object. We're going to call this. Um, tracker for PDA. I call it PDA because, like, I think of these things like an Iron Man effect, and his, and he's like a has a PDA like thing. So I just call. I'm in, I'm in the habit of calling it a PDA. Um, select edit target. Um, tracker for PDA. Apply. Make sure X and Y is none. Like OK. It will do that for us. And now all we have to do is grab this little pattern thing. And drag it to our PDA. It's, well, no, not yet. Undo that. What you need to do is you make sure you go to this and make sure it's where you want it to be. Um, I kind of don't like that position. I think it needs to be kind of higher up. So I'm just going to change the position. Just to go up. Like that. And now what we can do is we can tell it to track. We're going to right, grab the rope tool and tell it to track PDA. Now what it will do is it will follow the watch. It's just, see, it's following the watch. And it does a very nice job of doing that. And that is how you do that effect. Now if you want to get into a little bit more detail, command Y, our layer, new layer, solid. Do a light blue layer. Um, target the eye off of it. Um, grab this pen tool. Do like a mask around my face. Um, toggle it back on. And then what you can do is you can turn down the opacity and feather it out. Um, I think that's good. Then feather it out like a bunch. I'm not really lot feathering. I'm not getting detail if I want it this to look nice, it'd be looking sharp. But for the sake of tutorial, kinda getting over time here. Um if that um what you need to do is you might have a cutoff right there. So what you need to do is you see bring this solid. Make sure saw is selected and then just bring it up. Oh, no, not that. I had the solid selected. So, you know, just bring it to transform and bring it up because it, you have a cutoff right there and doesn't look good. So, like that. And then what you can do is just um, parent it to our tracker. And then you'll have, like, a glow on your face from it. Anyways, that's how you do it. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And if you want something else, like, um, it's right here.
I made this yesterday. Same footage. We have a tracker, a spinning thing. Something right here, you know, choose your weapon. You can choose your weapon, then boom, target on the screen, shoot it off. That's what I'm doing for a movie. So anyways, um, if you want something like that done, just let me know and you'll have a great day.